I'm meant to ask you a question just to introduce myself. I'm Ian Gent. I'm one of the people who nominated Patrick for this award together with Barbara Smith and Toby Walsh. And uh, Patrick has borrowed my t-shirt. Uh, so, which is rather disconcerting because it looks to me like I'm looking in a mirror but with a beard and more hair. <laughs> um, so Patrick, how do you feel uh, about winning this award? Stunned. I think that would be the best word. Pleasantly stunned. It was a, a fabulous surprise. Really, uh, a great, a great honour. It means a lot to me. Really, really. And um, do you want to say anything about people that you work with? No, because this is all entirely my own work. It's yeah. Been, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Deserved by me and me alone and these 46 people. <laughs> so these are the four, the people who've worked, written papers with me. Uh, Bruno de Banker, Chris Beck, Peter Burke, Paul Cockshot, Vincent Furnum, Ian Gent, Holger Hoos, Bob Irving, and he gives us the our nice Air Dosh number. Yes. Yes. Uh, Phil Kilby, Andrea Coltes, Ewan McIntyre, who most of you will know as Ewan McIntyre. -o. Yeah. No one's ever spelled his name correctly. David Manlove, Neil Moore, John T. O'Donnell, Greg O'Malley, Yevgeny Selensky, Paul Shaw, Barbara Smith, Costa Stergiu, Chris Unsworth, Vin, and I can't pronounce Vim's surname, Van der Ball, Rick Wallace, Toby Walsh, Wu Wee, Rebecca Mansi, Simon Rogers, Alice Miller, Christophe Lacoutre, Ken Brown, Peter Gregory, Kevin McDonald, Bill Johnson, Musin Buzuba, Gear Hassler, Craig Brind, Claude Muller, Chris Conley, Peter Burke. Yeah, already. Yeah, Peter Burke. John Costello, Ian Buchanan, James Campbell Hendry, who I wrote my very first paper with, Stuart Grant, Evan McGill, what's Brahim's surname? Is it Hinnish? Hinnish? Uh, Patrick Cross is in this list and uh, most recently, Pankaj Singh. So I make that 46 people involved in this award. So by my calculation, which is always very bad, that's 2.17% of this award I claim for myself. Uh, the rest I share with my co-authors. But since my 2.17%, I can do what I want. I'd like to dedicate it to John Gashnick. And, uh, so can you say something about uh, John Gashnick, since I know he's a hero of yours? Yeah, I think he's, his works in Constraint Satisfaction has been beautiful, elegant, simple. He's done wonderful experiments, especially when you consider when he did them, the compute power that was available, his analysis was always lovely and honest, nothing was hidden. It's just uh, first class, first class. Okay, well, right, that's it. We've got another 45 minutes to right. pop. I feel incredibly lucky that I've got something that um, I am that enthusiastic about. I'll give you a little example. Um, the first time I had cancer and I went through chemotherapy, I would get up in the morning. You lie in bed, you're feeling like used food, and you think, okay, I have to get up, and I would take 48 pills, and then there'd be other pills, that, that would be the chemotherapy that was weighed out, and then you'd have other pills to counter those effects, to maintain the kidney function, liver function, anti-nausea tablets. So it's a pretty daunting prospect. But whilst I was going through that, I found some interesting work to do on singleton heart consistency. And I found somebody on the web who was doing it, Christophe Lacoutre. And Christophe and I were doing what 
I do it with other people, communicating, emailing code, experiments, results, text. So it's, well, do I get up and take chemotherapy? Is that the first thing in my mind? No, it's let's get up and see what Christos results has got. And that was just fabulous to, to, to have, for Christoph to lift me through that one. So I'm forever grateful to Christoph because of that. So I think it's fantastic to, to have something that you're that interested in that is that much fun. Um, especially for me now. Especially for me now. That's Tara. Hello Tara. Oh, I'm just... That's for uh, Francesca. Rossi would like this. This is Tara. Um, very affectionate. Okay, tell you about darling. Together. Okay. So I think the first thing is... Uh, so th this is how I, I got to do the work on conflict directed back jumping. So it was 1986 to 89 we had a, a project, it was Alvi funded, you might yeah. remember that, British government. And I was um, brought in to work on the project because I developed a factory, uh, a factory reporting system. So we're going to build a scheduler on top of it. And I had the idea that what we should do is to put a scheduling agent on each machine in the factory and allow them to communicate and resolve conflicts. So in some ways it was a real push forward because PCs were just coming online, they were quite expensive things. So it was really distributed artificial intelligence and distributed constraint satisfaction problem. So we viewed the problem as one of satisfaction, but the key thing that we needed for this was that each agent had to be able to react to a problem because one would make a schedule and transmit the change in uh, time windows to other resources. So they had to be able to react. The other thing is if something was over constrained, they had to be able to supply back an explanation so that we could retract it. So you could see all the things were coming into place about reaction and explanation. So pieces were coming together and they were coming together through a practical application. So it was the application that was driving this development. It wasn't that, you know, it wasn't intentional. Um, so, in this system we had three classes of agents. We had operational agents, so these were the ones that actually did the scheduling on resources. And the first time we ran it, the whole system went chaotic. So today that wouldn't be a surprise. But to us, you had to implement it to discover these things. So we put something above it, which we call tactical agents, and they did load balancing between those agents. So the agents below could send up no goods, conflicts. The T agent would then put this into a truth maintenance system and then use it to resolve conflicts and do load balancing. But then we still got chaotic behavior. So we had something at the top of the T agents, which we call the strategic agent. So strategic, tactical, operational. And the S agent could relax the problem by uh, relaxing due dates or by adding in new resources, which could be people on the shop floor or an additional machine. Um, so the O agent, the operational agent, was essentially made of something I called explicit forward checking. So I called it EFC. So I didn't have, I'd read about forward checking, I'd implemented it, but I did it explicitly so all the nuts and bolts and levers and hydraulics and cables were uh, were there rather than done recursively. So when they're there, you can start looking at them and see what else you can do with them. So, we, so they were explicated. So that was my piece of work, developing the agents. Um, now the first agent we called the naked runner, or I called the naked runner. So this had no truth maintenance, no explanations, nothing. It was just a fast piece of code that would run to the solution and couldn't tell you how it got there. Um, so when the problem changed, uh, if it was adding a constraint so it became more restricted, it was easy to deal with that, but if you relaxed the constraint, you literally had to solve that agent's problem again. Everything. It, uh, so then I came up with a version where we recorded no goods and did things with it, 
and that was called EFCDDB, Explicit Forward Checking with Dependency Directed Backtracking. And in fact, that was dynamic backtracking. So that was in 1989. Uh, so it predated. So when you say dynamic backtracking, it meant it meant that when we find a conflict, we go to, we find a, a variable that uh, is takes part in an eliminating explanation, and we uninstantiate that. And when we uninstantiate it, we don't backtrack up to it. We pull it out down here. So we would forward check against it as we come down. So we res uh, retain all of the information in between. So it's almost like not a tree, it's a directed acyclic graph, the search space. is rather complicated to do, but the thing was it preserved all this knowledge that we could then pass around as uh, explanations. So obviously there were people around at that time that were very much influencing me. One of the things was the, the UK planning SIG group, where I met Barbara Smith, Edward Sang, Jerry Kelher, and Peter Ellaby. So, Jerry and Barbara were interested in that time in constraint satisfaction and truth maintenance system. Edward obviously was at the heart of constraint programming. And Peter Elderly was a real practitioner. He was very much a scheduler. And there were also papers at that time that were uh, a big influence. I literally read everything I could get hold of by Rena Dechter, uh, John Gashnik, which were, there, wasn't, there were only a couple of papers that were there, but they were very influential. Obviously, Harlick and Elliot and Alan Mackworth's work on our consistency. So in 89, I went to Itchcock. Yes, I did. And I presented a reactive scheduling agent, which was explicit forward checking with dependency directed backtracking. Now, at that conference, fabulous conference, I get dragged into a workshop on scheduling by Norman Sandy. And Pascal Hen Van Hentenrick was there, but one of the amazing things was outside the workshop there was a stack of reports, and one of the, this is the report. It's written by Bernard Nadell, CSC 85005, and it was on a stack, and it said one dollar, and I had one dollar, and I put it in the jar and took a copy away. Now, just. Looking at the paper, it's it's almost like a work of art. Um, let me just show you some of the pictures that we've got in it. Uh, does that come up here? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, how could you not want to read that? This kind of stuff. How about that for a dollar's worth? Um, let's see, I've got some more nice pictures. Microstructure. This is a dollar. So this was before the web, right? So, sorry, you can see I'm a fan of Bernard Nadell. So in reading this paper, there were bits in it that were just Here's something you wrote in the paper. It says page nine. Something to think about would be a synthesis of back marking and back jumping into an algorithm, say BMJ, back mark jump, he called it. We see in figure one and two that each algorithm avoids some checks that the other doesn't. Is it possible to combine both approaches while retaining all or most of the power of each? Our preliminary attempt, our, his preliminary attempt, at such an algorithm suggests that the answer may be no. This is perhaps why Gashnik did not suggest such a synthesized algorithm. However, more thought on this is warranted. Now isn't that lovely to put things in that, like that in a paper? Because some years later, this is a paper I wrote, just, can you see the title? It's called BM plus BJ equals BMJ. So, wouldn't have happened if I hadn't read um, this lovely 